cinema is inextricably linked to cars. Both motion pictures and motorized vehicles were born near the turn of the 20th century, and both have gone on to dominate our world. But what happens when the two meet? What makes a car scene in a movie great? And what are the best ways to film while driving, or to simulate driving? Get in. This is How to Film a Car Scene. Before we put the key in the ignition, remember to subscribe to Studio Binder and click the bell to stay in the know on all our filmmaking videos. Let's go. Although car scenes by definition take place in a contained space, there are a multitude of ways to capture them. But first and foremost, a car shoot must prioritize safety. Do you have your seatbelt on? Will you ask me that now? The filming process must be both safe for the cast and crew, as well as other drivers on the road. This is why for exterior shots where the actor can't be seen in the car, stunt drivers are typically used. Sometimes a stunt driver will control the car on a roof pod fastened to the top of the car so that the actor appears as though they are driving. Ensuring safety can often result in lots of added expenses, so shooting in a moving car is usually only done when absolutely necessary. A car shoot can look vastly different depending on budget and vision. From the DIY approach of the French Connection, we went 26 blocks at 90 miles an hour along here, and there was absolutely no control. We had no police control whatsoever. We didn't stop cross traffic. We didn't stop pedestrians from crossing the street. To the massively complex rigging for the Warner in Children of Men. Safety isn't the only challenge to a car shoot. Dynamic lighting and clean audio can all be difficult to achieve while driving down the road. But first, a filmmaker needs to consider camera placement. There are a variety of ways to mount a camera to a car. The vehicle being captured in the shot is called the picture car. And for larger budget films, this car may be placed on a process trailer. This refers to a low-level truck bed that holds the car so the actors don't actually have to drive. It also provides more space for camera setups on the bed rather than attached to the car. A slightly lower budget version of this approach is a tow rig, where the platform is removed, but the car is still being towed so that the actor still doesn't have to drive. Hey, did you ever notice that uh, like in movies that they, when they're driving, like they don't look at the road like for a long time? Gee, no, I, I never noticed that. Yeah, that's because uh, they're being towed, eh? Really? By like a rig. That's Sometimes neither of these options are feasible for a shoot. The camera will then be mounted onto the car with devices like a hostess tray, which locks onto the vehicle but requires the window to be open. Mounts will typically be additionally fastened to a car with ratchet straps. A very secure camera setup isn't just smart for safety reasons. If a camera is tightly attached to a car, the shot will appear stable even if the road is bumpy since it will move in perfect unison with the car. A moving car requires a mobile video village, typically based in a lead car, a separate vehicle following the same route as the picture car. This is where focus, monitors, and lighting are all operated. Because these are all remote, the wireless system needs to be top notch. No matter the rig, most car coverage falls under four basic shots. From the front windshield, from the back seat, through the window, and through the rear view mirror. While the camera placement is being locked down, the crew must also tackle lighting. For a moving car scene, lighting sources are typically moving as well. If a car is actually driving on location, this movement may happen naturally but a cinematographer may want to add other lighting elements. A crew may use chasing lights to simulate passing street lights. These are lights that turn on one after another to simulate a single source moving. 
Red lights that turn on and off can be added to the hood of the car to create the look of brake lights. Eye light can be achieved by bouncing a light off of the rear view mirror. For night scenes in particular, a filmmaker may add subtle interior lights to a car. In Collateral, Michael Mann's team made a version of the taxi with an interior entirely covered in Velcro, so they could stick on small interior lights where they saw fit. They also shot on digital, so that they could shoot in lower light. It should be noted, however, that interior lighting at night when the actor is driving can inhibit their view of the street, and can therefore be dangerous. Sometimes it is easier to simulate motion than to actually be driving the car. This is called the poor man's process, where a crew uses a stationary car and fakes movements with a green screen, rear projection, or virtual production LED screen. Depending on how the process is achieved, light sources will need to simulate movement. Reflectors can be moved in front of stationary lights to make it seem as though they are passing by or a light can be spun on a C-stand. On Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the crew rigged the lights to move in a loop over the car. For poor man processes that use virtual production, the LED screen can provide moving light. The same goes for rear projection. On Furious 7, the crew utilized the poor man's process, but placed the car on a moving rig so that the sun's position would naturally shift as well. Yes! Another consideration for a car shoot is recording sound. Recording sound during a car scene depends on how the scene is being captured. If the poor man's process is being employed, a production sound mixer can record the scene similarly to how they would cover any other interior, since they don't have to contend with many extraneous noises. Oh, come on! This guy's crazy! <laughs> if the car is actually moving, however, the calculation changes. Typically, the sound recordist will not be able to be in the picture car, so they'll need to plant microphones to try to get the best audio possible. A common technique is to place lavalier microphones in a car's visors, which allows the mics to be both hidden and close to the actor's mouths. Whatever mics are chosen, a mixer will usually need to use an FM transmitter so that they can record the sound from the lead car. A moving car comes with lots of unwanted noise. To get the best audio possible, the air conditioning should be turned off during takes, and the windows should be up. Mark! <laughs> a sound mixer will typically try to have the mic's rear facing the engine, so that its noise will be cut out as much as possible. Still, some background noise will be unavoidable when shooting in a moving car. I wish I could live through something. Aren't you? Nope. In post, a sound editor may try to cut off some of the low frequency of dialogue tracks to remove deep rumbling noises. I wish I could live through something. Aren't you? Nope. They can also try to mask imperfections by adding their own car sound effects into the ambience of the scene. An immaculate heart is already a luxury. Immaculate heart? You wanted that, not me. Miguel saw someone knifed in front of him at sack high. Is that what you want? Car scenes can be difficult. But as Hollywood and Beyond has shown us, they are far from impossible. With a keen attention to safety, the right equipment, and an eye for the details, a car shoot can result in a great scene. Car shoots require lots of deliberate planning during pre-production. Start mapping out your car scene with Studio Binder's scheduling and storyboard software. So until next time, don't be afraid to put the pedal to the metal.